going? <laughs> Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. So on my last Instagram, I asked you what what you want to see. Do you want to see something regarding breath management? Or do you want to see, see a video on how to sing in tune? And the Instagram poll decided we want to see a breath exercise. We want to speak about breath management. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm just gonna give some details and speak about the myth. And if you're super interesting in discovering more about voice exercises and breath, I would be happy if you just write me a message and schedule a lesson with me. When it comes to the voice itself, there are a lot of myths. There are a lot of sing from the diaphragm and inhale big air before you sing. So there are a lot of myths that come in. Um, especially nowadays, a lot of myths are debunked because technology changes very fast and we are much more better in, in our research and into looking into the inside uh, of our voice and how the voice works from the inside. And hundreds of years ago, it was of course not like this, right? Also, there were different society standards. If, for example, um, some hundreds of years ago, it was inappropriate for females to sing in their chest voice and the same for men, it was inappropriate for them to sing falsetto in their head voice. And now, of course, society standards have changed and it's totally normal. I myself had a teacher that used to say, if you're going to auditions and castings, don't use a male song, always go for a female song. It was also not allowed to change the key. Uh, the regulations are a little bit better on changing the key of a song if you want to go to foreign audition. But that's not the point today, we're going to look at breath. So I always like to use the word breath management and not breath support. I know everyone has this different um, explanation, has this different uh, term that he's using. But I like the term breath management because I believe that we are coordinating our breath um, instead of using it as a big support. Because when I look into support, then I want to engage the right muscles when I sing and that is what I refer to support. Let's start with the introduction of breath. Oh my god, did you know that there are three ways of breathing? Mm -hmm. So there are, let's start with the wrong breath. Many times, ah, that falls. <laughs> so, many times when I have students coming here in my studio, I always uh, discover the same, same kind of wrong habits, especially the first timers. They always sing in the high chest breath, the clav clavicular breath. That's a kind of a word, right? Cavicular breath. <laughs> so whenever you see someone singing and he breathes in and his chest is rising and the bone is rising, so that is like a kind of a short breath. In Germany we call that breath Schnappatmung. You do get a lot of volume out of that breath, but it's not referred to be as the best breath because you are quick inhaling and you won't sustain long phrases and hold long notes because it's mostly like <gasps> this kind of breath, right? So it's like <gasps> and that, yeah, and that causes actually a lot of tension and can lead you to cracking, to sound flat, so a lot of kind of that stuff. What is breath anyway? And I would like to quote, uh, quote a phrase from the New York Vocal Coaching School where I currently um, do a course as well. Amazing and I can just recommend it to you. So, the physical resistance of the exhalation gesture using muscles of the torso. That is their um, their explanation for the breathing, for breathing. The other way of breathing is the healthy way to breathe and I would always go for this breath and I also teach this breath and this is the abdominal breath. When you put your hand on your tummy and then you breathe in through your nose, if you have time, breathe in through your nose and not through your mouth. So you breathe in through your nose and then you feel the diaphragm lowers expense, yeah, and the tummy is getting big. And so you breathe in, tummy expands, you breathe out on, and the tummy is getting flat back again. So that's the abdominal breath, and that is really best and healthiest ways to go. 
other breath is the intercostal breath. It's very much known to dancers because dancers are using a lot of the core muscle, yeah, and the abdom uh, abdominal muscle because they're moving here. So that's why they are very much well trained to use the intercostal breath. You put your hand here and put your hand here. You're gonna breathe in and you feel how you are expanding on left and right. So please put your hand up here and you're gonna breathe in and then feel how your ribs are expanding and how you are making roof, room, <laughs> roof, <laughs> how you are making room to have a really good breath. And there is a third way of breathing is the apogeal breath and you are using your abdominal breath and the rib cage breathing. So when you put your hand here and you put your hand on your side and you breathe in and then you feel, you can also see it here, yeah, so when you are looking at my hand and on, on the side and you feel, yeah, how it's getting bigger on, le on the left and on the right side. So that's a balanced breathing using those, those uh, two ways of breathing. So when it comes to my, uh, my singing lessons, I don't want to be forever doing breath exercise, even though I do those exercises. But the problem oftentimes can lie in the wrong breathing. So this is quite simple to fix because it's something that you can see. There are other things that you cannot see that happening in the voice box. And that is not so easy to fix always. If someone sounds horsey or cracks, or flat or is off pitch can be that you might sing with the wrong breath management <laughs> that you don't have the right uh, breath support or breath management in that case very big thing we don't want the breath to be a pitch changer we are using the breath as a volume changer but please don't sing like never enough yeah because that was pretty much strained and pretty much pushy. Don't use breath force in order to hit the pitch because that is not how it works. That's not how we want it to be in the end product. So let's just look a little bit into the myth of singing from the diaphragm which is pretty much the bung but I have to say I sometimes use it as a metaphor. Yeah. Um, so especially with smaller kids. With smaller kids, uh, I do use a lot of metaphors as well for them to understand uh, how things work. So there is actually no singing from the diaphragm. It's a myth because the diaphragm cannot, it's a muscle, right? It cannot, in, we are inhaling through the lungs. So there's basically actually no breathing from the diaphragm. Diaphragm is a dome-shaped, very tough, and very one of my favorite muscles actually when it comes to singing and one muscle that we use all the time when we sing so there are a lot of muscles that engaging in our breath management breath support just to give you a small look into what we're actually using don't expect me to know those latin names external intercostals transverse abdominals rectus abdominis internal obliques, external obliques, etc. The list goes on. Quadratus lumborum. <laughs> that sounds like in a Harry Potter movie, right? Quadratus lumborum. <laughs> so there's a lot of muscles that are engaging when, when it comes to breathing. But it's fine if you just concentrate and um, the one and safety that I always do is the abdominal muscle and the apogeal breathing. That is good and that is fine. Let's just do one final exercise together. It's the simplest well-known exercise when it comes to breathing. And important is for you, just relax, calm down. Be relaxed when it comes to singing, but not too relaxed. Just feel grounded, yeah? Uh, feel that you're aware. And of course, when we are singing, we are using some kind of effort, body effort as well. So don't try to be too relaxed, but still not tense at all, okay? So put your hand on your tummy, try to lift your shoulders and then bring them back for you to stay straight, yeah? For bring everything in order, have a good posture, don't be slacking up and lowering the larynx, but don't create any tensions by, by going forward. So please don't do that, yeah? And then sing, just have a normal posture, okay? Because that's the quick and easiest way to fix your breathing problems. Okay, so put your hand on your tummy, gonna breathe through your nose. 
Feel how your tummy is getting big and then you're gonna breathe out. Oh. And so on and so on. So try to have at least like 30 seconds of breathing out. Because think about it like this. You are going to sing long phrases. You want to connect the endings when you sing. And it's all about to actually use the less air as possible. Why less air? Because less air is better vocal closure. Better vocal contact. And that is actually what is it's all about. It's all about having the best contact for the vocal folds. Better contact, better sound. That is everything. <laughs> okay, I hope you like my a very small, I was already not so small, introduction into breath management. Of course, if you feel that you would like to discover a little bit more your singing voice and how certain mechanism works, please feel free, drop a mail, schedule a lesson with me and I hope I see you in my next videos. Don't forget to subscribe, notification bell on. Yeah, and I love you guys and have a wonderful day ahead.